Good morning, and welcome to the Ridge Church. Whether you're joining us here on campus or online, we just want to say welcome. We're looking forward to a wonderful day, and I'm just going to take just a few moments and give you a snapshot of some of the things that are going on in the life of the Ridge Church. This week, on Wednesday night, our student ministry is kicking off the summer with a paint fight. Right after worship, they're going to be throwing colored paint powder at each other and having a great time. Uh, so if you have a student in the 6th through 12th grade, we would love for them to join us. Make sure they bring some clothes that so they can get messy and a towel for the ride home. A white t-shirt works really good too so they can really see all the colors. It's going to be a fun night. That's at 6.30 this Wednesday. We also have two events for people uh, who are looking for some connection this week. The first one is our Fellowship for Widowers, and that is Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. right here in uh, the church building. We would love for any widowers who want to feel connected with some other men to join us for that. We also have Widow's Hope. That is on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, so if you're looking in, in need of some connection, whether you're a widower or a widow, we would love for you to get connected with those groups. Also, it's crazy to think, but summer is quickly approaching, and VBS is just three quick weeks away. And so if you have a kid that just finished kindergarten or just finished sixth grade, make sure you mark June the 14th through 18th on the calendar. That's going to be an awesome event those nights. Uh, and if you want to help, I'm sure there's still room for you to join. So see Robin if you want to do that. Today's going to be a great day. I just want to read just an uplifting passage of scripture from the book of 2 Corinthians. It says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our affliction, so we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction, the comfort we ourselves receive from God. This morning, I hope that you will be comforted so you can go out and comfort those who are facing all kinds of different afflictions. Will you stand and worship with me? If you will, let's stand together. Uh, welcome to the Ridge this morning. We want to just worship the Lord and enter into his presence, offering up song and worship. Pray with me. Father God in heaven, Lord, we present ourselves, Father, a living sacrifice to you this morning. Lord, I pray that you will just that you will just resonate within us, that you will pour yourself through us, and that you will reach out to beyond this church, to the surrounding areas and peoples, and let them know that you are God, and let them know that we are your people. Jesus, speak to us, and speak through us. In your precious name, amen. <laughs> Kingdom will bow and open every chain with broken hearts to clear his way. Well, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting.
Hey, you may be seated. I want to welcome you this morning to the Ridge Church. Excited to see you all this morning, and hopefully you grabbed a bulletin on the way in the door. Not a lot to announce out loud other than to say, please read this. Look through it because some incredible events, as you heard Brad talk about on Snapshot a little bit ago, just right around the corner, and excited to see summer coming. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, seems like we were here talking about Christmas just a little bit ago. So, hey, also want to let you know if you're a first-time guest with us, we want to say thank you for being here. We appreciate you so much. If you'll also look in this bulletin, you'll notice a little perforated strip, a little plate, a thing you can fold and, and tear, and it's called a guest card. And would love to know that you are here, and you could actually exchange that for a gift at the welcome uh, counter just across the lobby. And uh, we just want to say thank you for being here. And we say it every week. We mean it every week. Thanks for trusting us and just taking the time to hang out with us. It means everything uh, to the Ridge Church that you're here. So, hey, let's pray. Just want to ask us to stop for a little bit. A lot of distractions in our life, I know. Uh, let's just stop and pray and ask God to allow us to take these next minutes especially. We want to do this every day, right? But we have the opportunity today as a corporate body of believers, as family, brothers and sisters, to come together and worship Him in song. Worship Him through the listening and applying of God's Word, right? And so let's just stop and ask God to give us that focus this morning. Let's pray. Father, again, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You are beyond. God, you've proven yourself time after time after time. And God, we know that we get good news one day and bad news one day. But God, that'll never be a test of your faithfulness. You're faithful in the bad news. You're faithful in the good news. You're everywhere and you're never changing. You're always there. And Father, we're getting ready to, to sing about you being our hope. And you are just exactly that. You are our hope. And you are safe. You are safe. And the only non-changing thing that we can stand upon, the only non-changing anchor that we can hold on to and know that that's where our hope is. Lord, right now, will you allow us just to let everything fall away that you don't want in this room right now. And Father, help us just to worship you worship you you want every person in this room right now but god some of the thoughts that i can have in my mind you don't want in this room i need to focus on you help us lord to do that right now we love you and you are so incredibly worthy we ask it all in jesus name amen jesus and bridge the gap between us and god feel free if you will if you want to stand and just worship him How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the
face shine upon you be gracious to you or turn his face toward you and give you peace Lord bless you and keep you his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. children, their children, their children, they 
seated. Every year we take time to recognize our first responders. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years. This year is 20 years since the 9-11 debacle happened in 01. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but every year we, we take a Sunday just to remember our first responders, the men and women who serve our community in law enforcement, fire protection, uh, ambulance, and so we want to do that right now. Is there anyone here that works in law enforcement, fire protection, ambulance, anyone here? Is Aaron in here? Come on down. I want you to come down. If you're retired, that counts. Anybody retired? I want you to come down just right here along the front. I know we're living in a day and age when these folks are under tremendous scrutiny. And I just, I just think it's so important that as a church, we just recognize them and just show appreciation. And, and I couldn't be more proud of them and more proud to, to, to support the men and women. Uh, the early service, we had three Franklin County officers. Two of them were actually working and uh, they stopped by during work and we had a chance to pray with them and pray over them. And so anyone else? Here, all right, I don't want to miss anybody. So we want to give them, there's a $25 gift card. There's a variety of different places. And so anyway, we appreciate you. And I want to have prayer for you guys before you sit down. Let's first of all, just give them a round of applause. Let's stand up, man. Let's see. Right, man, we appreciate you guys. So let me take a minute and just pray for them. I want you to join me as we pray for them and the other men and women who serve uh, our community. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for these who are standing in front of us. I want to just thank you, Lord, for their service. I thank you that every day when they head out, they really never know what each day holds. The Father, they're willing to serve the community and just literally give so much of themselves. I also pray for their spouses, their families, and they too are very, very involved in what's going on in their lives. So I thank you for the families. I just pray an angel protection around each of these individuals and the other men and women who serve our community. God, give them wisdom in every split-second decision that they need to make. I pray that you would just guide them, protect them, and Father, just love on them in a special way as they give so much to us. Father, we just want to give back our prayers, our love, and our support to them. Thank you so much for these brave men and women who serve our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. So if you're watching, you're a first responder, stop by the church and we will have a gift for you. So we appreciate that very, very much. 
This morning, I want to begin a mini-series on spiritual gifts. Now, I want to make a confession to you that I probably, this is a subject that sometimes I hurdle over, I kind of push on the back burner, I don't talk about as often as I should, and that's to my, my shame. But this morning, I just want to do, again, start kind of a mini-series on desiring spiritual gifts. And these are some of the passages where the Bible talks about spiritual gifts and discovering where you fit in. And so I grew up in a church that I don't remember a lot being said about spiritual gifts, but again, I also want to be honest to remind you that I slept through a lot of services. So I didn't always pay attention growing up in church, which is not to the fault of the guy who was preaching, but more to my fault. But this morning, I want to talk about, again, kind of lay kind of a foundation for spiritual gifts, all right? And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14, the two chapters that probably talk the most about spiritual gifts, I just want to remind you that that chapter in the middle, obviously chapter 12, chapter 14, that chapter in the middle is what we call the love chapter. And Paul basically says, regardless of what gift you have or think you have, if it's not done in love, it's nothing. And so the ultimate end is to discover your spiritual gift, but again, to serve the body in love. That's really, really vitally important. So Paul says here, right after the love chapter, in chapter 13, chapter 14, verse 1, the very next verse says, pursue love. He says we need to go after that God kind of love. And then he says, and desire spiritual gifts or spiritual things, but especially that you may prophesy. Now, I'm just being honest with you. I grew up in a church that I don't ever remember anyone ever telling me to desire to prophesy. I mean, I had... I had no really idea what that was, but it's interesting that Paul would say we should desire spiritual gifts. We should be desiring for us to operate in the Spirit. And so I don't know about you, and I don't want you to respond, but I wonder how many of us, part of our daily prayer time, is truly asking God to show us and to give us spiritual gifts. Because God has gifted the church, he's gifted the body of Christ so that we can serve one another. But he says, especially that you prophesy. Now, I'm going to take an entire Sunday, maybe next week or the week after, and I'm going to talk about prophecy versus speaking in tongues, all right? That's one that I have hurdled over a long time. But that's in chapter 14. He develops this idea between prophesying and speaking in tongues. Now again, depending on how you grow up, and when you think about spiritual gifts, it is about as broad of a subject as you can imagine. It brings up a lot of heated debate. There are people who believe that some of the gifts, the miraculous gifts, the gift of prophecy, there are people who believe those have been done away with after the apostles. Now, I'm just, I'm just giving you my opinion. Those people love the Lord. They have a couple scriptures. I believe that the same gifts that God gifted the church with in the very beginning are the gifts that he intends for the church to operate all time. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe some of those gifts have been abused, and because of that abuse, we have a tendency of backing off altogether but I just want to present them as I believe the Bible teaches. And if you have a disagreement, if you see it different than me, and you want to take me out and buy me lunch, I will listen to you, okay? I've heard about everything there is to hear about gifts, but if you buy me lunch, I will listen to it again, all right? And so it's okay. It's okay if we don't always see eye to eye, but I just want to share with you from a biblical perspective what the Bible says about gifts and how we should be desiring spiritual gifts or spiritual things that same verse in the complete jewish bible says this keep on eagerly seeking the things of the spirit and especially seek to be able to prophesy i wonder again for those who are here those who are listening i wonder how many of us could honestly say that we're asking god for the gift of prophecy I mean, again, I'm just being honest. I don't ever remember growing up, even in most of the years of my ministry, ever even thinking about asking God and seeking the gift 
of prophecy. I've, I've never even thought about it. But again, I want to just see why would Paul say that? Why would Paul say to seek that? Now, the last verse of chapter 13 is the verse they use for saying that some of those gifts have been done away with. Well, the very next verse, he says, seek prophecy. Seek to be able to prophesy, all right? And so understanding spiritual gifts. And so in chapter 12, going back a couple chapters, Paul says, now concerning spiritual gifts are spiritual things, I do not want you to be ignorant. He says, I want you to understand spiritual gifts. Why would he say that? Because if we don't understand spiritual gifts, I think we're going to not understand what's going on in people's life. And once you understand where God has gifted you, you're going to find a place to plug into the body of Christ where you can use that gift to help edify the body of Christ. And let me go on to say, and he develops here in chapter 12, that because we're so diverse, that literally we're like a human body. Some are ears, some are eyes, some are the nose, the hands, the feet. But all of us come together, even though we're very diverse, we come together and we form one body. And so again, the, as understanding the gifts, we know that there is a diversity in the gifts. We don't all have the same gift, but we all need each other. Can I just tell you the way God designed the church, you can't be happy. You really can't be fulfilled as a believer unless you're plugged into a local church because that's how he designed it. He designed it where we need each other and that's why we need to understand what spiritual gifts are because that helps us again appreciate each other in the body of Christ. How many of you sometimes get frustrated that everybody isn't like you? I mean, I don't know why people, they they want a different color carpet than I do. I don't get it. I don't know why people want to do things different. But again, as we understand spiritual gifts, it really does help us appreciate each other in the body of Christ. God had a sense of humor when he put us all together. I'm just saying. I mean, there's no way we would normally all get together outside of church because in a normal setting, we're so different. But yet God brings that diversity together. And that's why Jesus said the whole world will know your mind. The whole world will know if they see you love one another because it's not natural to love people that are different. All right? So that the, the term spiritual gifts there refers to the whole area of spiritual things which include the gifts of the Spirit. So the Bible tells us do not be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And so for me to push that on the back burner and not talk about it is my fault. And so again, God wants us to be aware. He doesn't want us, and even though some people may abuse some of the gifts, we shouldn't back off and just totally ignore them as well. And so I'm of that camp that believes, again, that all of the gifts that God gave originally are still supposed to be a part of the church today. And so we're going to talk about that as we go forward. And so the word ignorant there signifies a lack of knowledge or perception. It's a willful blindness. In the Amplified Bible, it says this. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. And so again, the Bible says very clearly not to be ignorant. In other words, take time to understand spiritual gifts. And so as we go through some of these today, you're going to recognize certain people that have certain gifts. You may have yours narrowed down maybe to two or three, but we all have gifts of the Spirit, okay, as we go forward. So what are some differences? All right, notice as as it goes on there in 1 Corinthians 12, and let's just read it together, and you at home can read with us as well. Would you join me? There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every pastor. How many of you know the pastors are more gifted than everyone else? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? Each one. Can I just tell you, you're as important to the body of Christ as I am. 
I may have a different office than you, but you have as much of the life of God as I do. How many of you have ever stubbed your little toe? How many of you know there's as much life in that little toe as any other part of your body? How many of you have ever done the holy dance, the charismatic, oh, ah, oh, ah? I just want to tell you that every member of the body of Christ has been gifted. I mean, to, to discover your gift is really kind of exciting to think about how God has gifted you and how God has gifted other people in the body of Christ. And so again, there's a lot of diversity, there's a lot of differences, but it's the same Lord. It's God that unites us together. When somebody asks, how in the world can all you folks who are so different, how in the world can you ever come together as one? There's only one way, there's only one answer, and that's God. And when we understand the same God that lives in me, lives in you, lives in each other, we begin to appreciate each other. And again, people say to me, I can go to heaven without the church. It's possible, but you would be miserable. That's like getting up every day and leaving half your body in bed. Doesn't work well. I mean, God designed this thing where we need each other. God has a sense of humor. He really does. You think about putting us all together in one body, he has to have a sense of humor. And so we have to realize, I'm not doing this by myself. When somebody tells me, I don't need the church. Now what they're saying is, they probably got burnt out by the church. And I get it. Can I tell you, being a part of a body is the best of times and the worst of times. But yet God designed this thing where we need each other. And if somebody says to me, man, I, I can go to heaven without the church, I would say, well, you could be married and never go home, but it wouldn't be much of a marriage. But God designed it where we need each other. When we understand spiritual gifts, it really does give us an appreciation for each other. It helps me kind of smile when I think about how God designed it where we need each other. And that's why you're here today. I mean, there could be a lot of things you could be doing this morning. Why does why is something draw us together? I believe it's because that's the way God designed this thing, all right? So the purpose of spiritual gifts, let me give you four. It builds up and edifies other believers. So what God has gifted you with is not so you can bless yourself. God has gifted you so you can be a blessing to the body of Christ. Uh, it brings unity in the church, as we talked about. It's a witness to the world of God's love. It helps us to be more understanding of other Christians. And so again, why do we want to understand spiritual gifts? Because it really does give us an understanding of how God has designed the church. What are some benefits of understanding spiritual gifts? You'll be a better steward of your time. You will know where to serve. You will experience a deeper joy. You will bring God glory in serving others. And so as you understand how God has gifted you, it helps you know where to plug into the church where you can find passion and joy in doing something. And by the way, when somebody comes to me, and here's how I can discover people's spiritual gifts. People come up to me and say, Pastor, I think we need to start a bus ministry. What do I think God's leading them to start? A bus ministry. And so when they come up to me and say, man, I think God is leading us to do this. Guess who I asked to do it? It's really easy. I had a couple of gals come up to me about 11 years ago, and they said, we want to do a dance ministry for the Lord. We want to call it Dance for Joy. Now, how many of you know that a Baptist church and a dancing ministry doesn't always fit? I'd never thought about a dance ministry. I just never have. I've never been to a conference where they said, y'all, start a dance ministry. But they came and they said, uh, we feel like God wants us to minister to young ladies and we can do tap dance, ballet, all these things. And so I never thought about it, but guess who I asked to do it? For 11 years now, they've given up their Thursday night, Friday night, for many years, they did it on Saturday morning. Every Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning. And there'd be a hundred or so young ladies signed up to take dance. 
I've, had, I've actually had parents stop me in Walmart. I don't even know who they were. Somehow they knew I was connected to the church. And they would come up to me and say, Pastor, we just can't thank you enough for having a Christian dance ministry. And I wanted to say, I thought of that, but I didn't. And so I just humbly, I had nothing to say other than it was God. I've never even had a deacon call me and ask me about our dance ministry. This church is really accepting of a lot of different diversity. But if you have somebody come up to you and say, man, I feel like we ought to be doing this, most likely that's them supposed to do it. And that makes my job really easy. People just about have quit coming up to me saying things. Because they know they're the ones that's going to be doing it. And it usually works really well. Can I just tell you, our greatest outreaches, our greatest ministries, I have had nothing to do with. It's putting something God has put on someone's heart, and they've come, and they've done fantastic. That's how the body works. When you find what God has gifted you with and where your passion is, that's what's going to bring you joy. And so it really is amazing, all right? How can we abuse spiritual gifts? If we exalt our gift above other people's gifts, I think we get filled with pride. If we neglect our spiritual gift, and that's what I was guilty of, really, for most of my life. I just neglected the idea of gifts because I didn't want to be convicted, and so I just kind of neglected the whole subject. We can reject our spiritual gift. You can know how God's gifted you and just choose to not use it. Or you can be jealous of someone else's gift. How many of you have ever been jealous of somebody else who just seemed to have such natural ability? I mean, I, I'd love to be able to sing like David or Chuck. But God hasn't gifted me that. I mean, Milo Haynes, how many of you knew Milo Haynes? He pastored in Grace Summit for a long time, loved uh, Milo. And I had him preach here a couple of times. Right in the middle of his sermon, he'd walk over to the piano and begin to sing. It was so awesome, but it kind of made me a little jealous because I don't have that option. You wouldn't want me to go over and play the piano and sing unless it's for the benediction to get everybody out of here. But you know, we're all gifted in different ways. And sometimes we say, man, I I wish I had the gift that Eric had. I wish I I wish I was a servant like so and so. But again, we're all gifted in different ways and we need to appreciate that. And so in in, uh, some of the giftings listed. And let me just say, again, I know people that I love that love the Lord who have said to me, I believe a lot of the miraculous gifts are no longer here. But I just have a hard time believing that what God did and how God designed the church in the first century, that we would need something different today. So I'm of that group that believes the same gifts that he gave in that early church, we still need today. And even though I grew up in a church where we didn't talk about it and didn't exercise some of these gifts, to me it doesn't mean that they're not supposed to be in the church. And so I'm just going to share it as I believe the Bible teaches it. And so in Romans chapter 12, there are seven motivational gifts of grace. And they are prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, organizing, and mercy. And then in chapter 12, there are some ministries. Sometimes these gifts come in the form of a ministry. Now again, being honest, I grew up in a church where I don't know a lot of these ministries that happened in our church. And so there's the ministry of the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, miracles, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, various tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And so again, many of these were foreign to me as I grew up in church, I'm just being honest. And again, I missed a lot of things, so some of it may be my fault. And then there's some manifestations given in chapter 12 as well. And these are the manifestations, and to me, these are gifts that God gives as we're ministering. God may give us a gift that we need at that moment. And these gifts are a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, workings of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, various tongues, and interpretation 
of tongues. And this has probably happened to every one of us. How many of you have ever been talking to somebody, maybe you've been teaching a class, and all of a sudden God gives you a word, something to share, a verse that you weren't preparing to share, but God gave you a verse that fit perfectly into someone's situation. I believe that's a word of knowledge. It's, it's God giving you a word that they need as you're ministering. And so again, some of these manifestations I have kind of put on the back burner, but again, I think God wants us to understand what they are. And then there's a list in Ephesians chapter 4 of gifts of, of people that God has given the church to equip the church. And these are the gifts that are listed. He's given the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors, teachers. And these are gifts given to the church so that they can equip the church to do the ministry. Let me go on record as saying, I do not believe my job is to do all the ministry of the church. By the way, I can't do all the ministry of the church. But my primary job is to equip the church so that you can do the ministry of the church. We're all to work together in the body of Christ. And I know some churches pay the pastor to do all the work. And those are churches that are really going to struggle big time. Because the truth is, we're all part of the body of Christ. And then when you discover your gift and begin to use your gift for God's glory, it's going to bring you incredible joy when you begin to serve the body of Christ. And so we're going to look a little bit closer at these charismatons, these gifts of grace that are mentioned in Romans chapter 12. So let's look at a couple verses before Paul lists these verses in Romans 12. He says something very similar there than he does in 1 Corinthians 12. Let's read together. For we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that has been given to us, let us use them. And then he lists these seven gifts, all right? And I'm just going to look at them very quickly, just give you a couple thoughts about these gifts that are listed in Romans chapter 12. The word charismatons, and by the way, how many of you ever heard the term charismatic? Those people are charismatic. We ought to be charismatic. Because in the true sense, God has gifted the church to have charisma. And that word literally means the first four letters are the Greek word for joy. The first six letters are the Greek word for grace. And so if we're operating in the spirit of God, we are charismatic in the true sense of the word. And so we ought to be, again, understanding what our gifts are and not be afraid to use them for God's glory, all right? So let's look at these seven real quickly. First of all, the uh, charismaton of prophecy. To reveal the motive of man's heart and to see God's standard conform to. Someone with the, the gift of prophecy would be someone, if 98% of stuff is going right, they're going to see the 2% that's not going right. God has gifted certain people to make sure that we don't stop at a certain level, but we keep moving toward maturity. Now, a preacher that would have the gift of prophecy would probably come across negative a lot of the time because they're going to preach on what's not going right. And if you've ever heard somebody say, man, all they do is hammer and hammer all the things that are going wrong. Well, someone with the gift of prophecy, again, God's given them that so the church doesn't ever get satisfied and they keep moving forward with maturity. Now, if you have the gift, how many of you know somebody who comes across as a little bit overcritical? All right, they may have the gift of prophecy, all right? And so if you know that you have that gift, you need to really be careful how you come across to people because, again, it does come across very negative, or it can come across very negative. And then there's the gift of serving, to discern and meet needs of a more practical nature. Now, I think we're all to serve the body of Christ, but some people are just gifted with being a server. They just have, a, I mean, if there's ever a need comes up and somebody needs a house painted, or somebody needs, they're one of the first ones to volunteer. 
And a server has to be careful because sometimes I've seen people who I think have the gift of serving and they're always out helping everybody else and sometimes they neglect their own family. And you really got to be careful that you don't get so busy out helping everybody else that you put your family on the back burner. How many of you know somebody who's a server? I mean, I, I honestly know quite a few people that I think have the gift of serving. They love working behind the scenes. They don't have to have their name in lights, but they just have a joy in helping other people. The third one is teaching. Someone who has this gift to clarify the truths of Scripture through research and instruction. And these are people that want to make sure that what we're teaching is biblically accurate. There's someone that if I have an illustration, they want to make sure that whatever illustration I use, it does meet the criteria of the Bible. And so again, we all should have a desire for truth. But God has gifted certain people in the church to make sure that we are staying biblically accurate. And again, these people may come across a little bit nitpicky. Pastor, I want to talk to you about something you said. I'm not sure I agree with it. or somebody, And it's okay. It's okay. And they again, their passion is just to make sure that what we're teaching is biblically accurate. And we need those people in the church. And then there's exhortation. I love this lady here. Whoa! Woo! Just all excited. To admonish and encourage individuals to pursue a course of conduct by helping them visualize God's best. I think Bob Caldwell has the gift of encouragement. Bob can be on the phone at any given time, and he's talking to 20 different people at the same time. Not talking, texting. He's texting a youth guy over in Alabama. He's texting this guy over here, this pastor who's hurting. I mean, he's on the phone probably 18 hours a day. And he's always helping others. I shouldn't probably tell you this. I debate what I should tell you. But this morning I walked into the restroom and and Bob was in one of the urinals. He had his phone in one hand. I said, Bob, put the phone down. Take a break just for a couple minutes. I feel so blessed. I tell you, of all the people I've ever met in my life, and there's been a lot of encouragers, I think Bob is probably the most gifted in this area of anybody that I ever know. He just has a heart to help everybody else. How many of you know an encourager, someone who just, they're, they're, they just live to encourage other people? Now, encouragers aren't always organized, all right? And so the next one is giving, sharing of oneself and our resources to meet specific needs. Now, I think we're all to give, but there are some people in the body of Christ that are just gifted. They have a passion to make sure that we as a church are giving out. These are people that would have a heart for missions. They want to make sure that the church is mission-minded, that they're giving back along the journey. And again, we need those people. They may be in a business meeting and somebody say, man, they are, don't they have any concept of the dollar? They're always wanting to give, give, give. But someone with this gift just wants to make the sure that the church isn't about just building an empire here but it's giving back along the way. How many of you know someone with the gift of giving? I absolutely know people who, who love to serve on the missions council because they enjoy giving. They want to meet needs locally and around the world as well. And then the gift of organizing. I want to go on record as saying I do not have this gift. All right? And Brenda will testify to that. But anyway, and, and I want to also say Bob doesn't have this gift as well. Bob and I have a lot of things in common, which is sad for Bob. Uh, and so organizing is to provide and helping and inspiring others to fulfill delegated responsibilities. Someone with the gift of organization, and I believe my wife perhaps has this gift. And so an organizer and an unorganizer together, I don't, I don't always, but she is incredibly gifted. And these people that have the gift of organization, those are the ones you want to put in charge of an event because they have a way to organize everything, to get the right people in place, and just to pull off that, that uh, event, whatever it is. 
And so you can go in my office and know in a blink of an eye, I do not have that gift, nor does Bob, all right? And so we're both kind of like left or cross-eyed discus throwers. We're kind of all over the place. But I thank God for people that are organized. The church has to have those people who can organize things and uh, pull off an event. And then there's mercy, to empathize with the weaknesses of others, to help them experience God's grace in times of need. I believe uh, Raymond Laramore has this gift. Raymond's probably the best pastoral care guy I've ever met. I mean, I enjoy mo going to the hospitals. I enjoy being with families when they're going through a grieving process. I know it sounds crazy, man. I desire being with families going through the funeral process because there's something about just loving on families and helping families. But Raymond Laramore is the best I've ever seen. I mean, he can just spend six, eight hours at the hospital with someone going through surgery. I mean, he just sits with people, man. And I can ask him about almost anyone. He has a book, and he just keeps track of all the contacts. I am so glad to be able to serve alongside of, of Raymond Laramore. He really does have an incredible gift. And what he's doing for our church, man, he's just getting to use that gift to minister to us, but also to bring glory to the Lord. And some people may look at Raymond and say, why isn't every pastor like that? Why aren't they all like that? Because we're all gifted differently. But I am thankful that we can use him and that he can plug in. And he's such an incredible blessing to our church. It's an honor for me to serve with him. And so a couple more verses here. Paul says to Timothy, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the elders. So he tells young Timothy, Do not neglect what God has gifted you with. And so I want to say with you guys, as we're coming to an end here this morning, do not neglect how God has gifted you. And so take time to look at the gifts, to pray over the gifts. And in case you're not sure maybe where you are gifted, ask people who are close to you. Because oftentimes people who are close to you can see in your life what you maybe cannot see in yourselves. And so ask those around you. So do not neglect the gift that was given to you. And then Peter says this, as each one has received a gift. And again, I want to say every member in the body of Christ is equally important. There is no important and unimportant people in the church. There really isn't. Every member is vitally important in the church. As a matter of fact, Robin gave me this puzzle. They bought a puzzle. It's a 1,000-piece puzzle, and it's three feet long. And they put this puzzle together, and it looks very similar. This is the kind of puzzle that would drive me a little bit crazy. But she put the puzzle together, and guess what she said? They got it all together, and it was missing one piece. One piece. I said, well, 999 out of 1,000, that's not bad. But yeah, but when you put hours put that puzzle together, and it's one piece short. What do you do with a puzzle that's one piece short? She gave it to me. He said, we don't have any need for it. Why don't you take it? That meant a lot. But this reminded me of the church. Because when one member's missing, it affects the body. It really does. I mean, God's love. God is loving us through each other. And once we discover spiritual gifts, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's something to get excited about and to begin to plug in where God has gifted us. And because it does bring joy in our life. And so he says, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You know, God has given you a gift so that you can be a steward of that gift. That gift is not for you. And I've actually talked to some people who have told me, I've got all the gifts. They're really thinking of themselves too highly. Anybody that has all the gifts, they don't need the church. They can just minister to themselves. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we're gifted differently. And the reason for it is God has to have a sense of humor 
to bring us together, give us different gifts so that we need each other in this journey. I feel like the most blessed person on the planet to have, to be able to, to pastor a church. And once we began to operate in the spirit, I mean, it's, there's nothing better. It's the best of times, it's the worst of times, but when the spirit begins to work, there's unbelievable joy in the church when we begin to function and use the gifts God has given us. It really is amazing. And that's why Paul said, desire spiritual gifts. We need to really pray and ask God to show us where we're gifted. And how we can use that gift for his glory. And so the word steward there is one who governs someone else's estate. Scripture teaches us to number our days and apply our heart to wisdom. The last slide. This is the one you've been waiting for. About spiritual gifts. Are you desiring spiritual things or are you neglecting? And again, I'm being, if I'm really being honest probably even much of my ministry as a pastor i neglect it really looking at spiritual gifts because again it's been so abused there are so many different opinions about it it's really a lot easier not to even talk about it because some of you if you grew up a different way you're going to disagree with me and again it is okay it really is okay if you don't see it the way that i see it but I just have that childlike enough faith. I believe that how the Bible has it is how I want to believe it. And because I haven't experienced it doesn't mean it's not right. And so I want to change and I want to conform to what the Bible teaches. I believe all the gifts are still available today. And again, I think it's next week. I'm going to talk about uh, prophecy versus speaking in tongues. That's going to be fun. And so if you really struggle with, with speaking in tongues, or you might want to miss next week. It might be a good week to take a vacation. All right? But I want to give you what I believe the Bible teaches, and I want to experience. I just want to tell you, I want to experience everything that God has for me. I don't want to go overboard. I don't want to run past God. But I also don't want to back off and neglect spiritual things. So let's take a moment. How many of you are just here today would just say by the uplift of hand, how many of you have, have heard of a gift today that you believe might be your gift? Anybody here? All right. Good. That's, that's probably over half of us. How many of you here have a slight idea? Maybe you're down to two or three things. All right. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. How many of you, when we go in through some of these gifts, how many of you thought of somebody else that fits that description? All right? And again, that's where it's kind of fun to know once you know what your gift is, it helps you know where to plug in to the church. I'm excited. I really am. I feel like I have the greatest job on the planet to be able to hang out with God's people and just again to see God do what only God can do in the body of Christ. Let's stand together. Maybe you're here, or maybe you're watching by way of stream, and maybe today for the first time in your life, you just feel a tug in your heart, and maybe you're not sure that you've ever invited Christ into your life. I pray that right where you are, you'll take a minute and just acknowledge that Jesus died for you, ask him to forgive you and to come into your life, and I believe he will honor that. If you've never been baptized, I believe that's the first step of obedience. If you're visiting and this is where God is leading you to plug in and become a member, we invite you to come. Or maybe you just need someone to pray with you or pray for you. I just want to go on record as saying I believe there are people who God has given an unusual ability to pray for the sick and for them to be healed. I have a neighbor who might be watching but I believe that God has gifted him. It doesn't mean everybody he prays for is going to get healed. But God has used him enough times. I mean, when, when I had lunch with him, I asked him just to pray over me. I, I, I can't tell you how many people I've gone to and just knelt down and said, would you pray for me to be a better pastor? Would you pray for me to operate in the Spirit? 
because some of you are gifted in areas that I'm not. And we really do need each other. And it's so exciting when you begin to discover your gift. So what, let's just take a minute, and I know we're, we're, we need to be exiting out of here, but let's just take just a minute if we could have some soft music playing. I just want you to just surrender to God. Would you begin to ask God and desire for God to show you spiritual things? That we wouldn't operate one day in the flesh, but every Sunday that we gather, we would just be operating in the Spirit of God. There may be somebody God is putting on your heart to go visit or make a phone call or text. I just want you to follow what God has put on your heart. Would you just surrender however God has gifted you and just surrender to use that gift to build up the body of Christ? On our way out today, we're going to receive a dollar offering. If we have that slide, I think it's, there it is. Uh, John and Katie McCurdy, longtime members here. I believe that they have the gift of serving. As long as I've known them, they have been behind the scenes. Uh, they're here still, and he's going through cancer treatments. I know he probably should be home resting, but I get here about 10 to 7 on Sunday mornings, and they're probably the first one here other than David. They're one of the first ones here to get here and help make coffee for, for the body. Well, he's been out of work, and he has, they haven't asked for anything, but as a staff, we really felt like it was just something we want to do is just give a dollar offering for them just to love on them and help them through this time and so on the way out today there's a basket in the back and it'll have john and katie's name on it and if that's something god lays on your heart uh, if you want to give a check somebody asked me well you can make it out to the church and we will give them a hundred percent of what's in that basket will go to them and it's right ahead of the offering uh, box back there I, I, again, I just want to say thank you for letting God use you. And again, I can't tell you how many people have asked me, how, how is Villa Ridge, what, I mean, how has God been doing that in Villa Ridge? And, and I wish I could say I had something to do with it. But it's just people standing up and people rising up doing what God's called them to do. It's really a beautiful thing. Let me pray and then we're going to close out with a song. Father, fill us with your spirit. Father, help us to desire spiritual gifts and spiritual things. And I pray that as we discover our gift, God, we will yield it to you and we will serve the body with that gift. And Lord, also give us the grace to receive from other members of the body. Help us to receive the ministry that you've gifted them with. Fill us with your spirit. Help us to make a difference everywhere we go this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.